Okay, uh, thanks for coming everyone, it's good to see you. So uh, right now I want to give you just a basic introduction to how do you run simulations with OpenMM. Now it actually turns out that it's always a little hard to describe to people exactly what OpenMM is. Uh, but since you just heard from VJ what it is, I'm just going to start out with a pop quiz to review what he just uh, told you. So, quiz for everyone. OpenMM is, is it A, an ap application for running molecular simulations? Or is it B, a library of simulation routines for use by applications? Or is it C, a domain-specific language for molecular simulation? Or is it D, all of the above? D, yes, you're right. Um, as if I would ask that question if the answer were anything else. Um, right, which is why it's a little difficult sometimes to describe what OpenMM is, because it's actually this very flexible package that is all of these things at once. Um, so in this talk, I am mainly going to be covering uh, A, the first aspect of it, of, uh, how to treat it as an application for running molecular simulations. And then in later talks, uh, or later on today, we'll sort of go into B and C and see how you use it for some of those things. So, what is OpenMM? It's really uh, two main components. First, there is a low-level computational library that's written in C++. And this is a library that can be used from any application, including applications that you write, uh, that can make use of it to perform molecular dynamics related features like computing forces and computing energies and integrating equations of motion and things like that. Uh, but there's also another layer on top of that, uh, what we call the application layer, uh, which is written in Python and which adds all the features that you need to make it into a complete application that knows how to do things like, you know, load and save common file formats for molecular uh, models and, uh, you know, build a uh, description of a system based on a description of a force field and things like that. Uh, we support uh, both GPUs and running on GPUs and CPUs. Uh, with GPUs, we support both NVIDIA and AMD uh, GPUs. So far as I know, we're the only uh, molecular dynamics package that supports AMD GPUs. Uh, and we have computations that are implemented in both OpenCL and CUDA. Uh, if you don't know what those are, don't worry about it too much. But OpenCL is, a, uh, is, is an industry standard cross-platform uh, la or technology and language for writing th uh, code that runs on CPUs and GPUs. CUDA is similar, but it's a proprietary technology developed by NVIDIA and it only works on their devices. We try with OpenMM to target several distinct types of users uh, and we think it's a very unique package in that it can actually do a good job in targeting all of these different groups of users. So first of all, uh, there are biologists and chemists who just want to run molecular simulations. And when these people use OpenMM, they use the application layer to run their simulations, and they use it more or less as they would use any other uh, molecular simulation package. The second group that we're targeting is application developers, people who are writing applications of their own and who uh, want to be able to include molecular simulation features in their applications. And so these people are going to be using OpenMM as a computational library that they can plug into their applications and make use of the features provided by OpenMM however they want. And the third group of users that we target, and we think OpenMM is really unique in how it targets these users, I don't know of any other package that's half as good for these people, uh, is algorithm developers, people who are not just uh, running simulations, but coming up with new methods for running molecular simulations. Uh, new algorithms, new types of force fields, uh, et cetera. Uh, and these people uh, can use both Python and C++. Uh, they can work at the application layer, they can work at the computational library, and they can use some of the very unique features of OpenMM, uh, such as custom forces and custom integrators that we'll talk about later this afternoon, to very, very easily uh, prototype and try out new algorithms that they may be developing. So, how do you run a simulation in OpenMM? So, the first thing to understand is that what we call the application layer it really is just a set of Python libraries. Uh, 
that you can call from any Python program. So what really happens is that you write a Python script to run a simulation making use of the OpenMM libraries. Now, let's get a show of hands. Who here uh, is a proficient Python programmer? Raise your hand. Actually, we've got a fair number, a few of you, some, you know, it's maybe two thirds. And uh, how many of you consider yourselves proficient in any programming language? Most, but again, not quite all. Um, so the rest of you are probably thinking right now, my god, what am I doing here? Um, don't worry. No programming experience is required for this. Here's how I like to describe it. Any MD application, you're going to have to write some sort of a control script to tell it what simulation you want it to do. This is true in any, any MD package. It just happens that in OpenMM, that script happens to be written in Python. But that doesn't mean it's any harder uh, to write than the scripts for any other MD application. Uh, so don't worry. We will give you exactly what the scripts are that you need. Uh, we will show you exactly how to customize them to run whatever simulations you want. So let's actually dive in and go through an example script. So this is a complete uh, control script to run a simulation with OpenMM. Uh, it's not very long. Uh, it, uh, hopefully, uh, you'll find it's not at all confusing when you go through it. And the script, or one almost exactly like it, is actually included uh, in the examples directory that you got when you downloaded OpenMM. So you can just start with the script that we give you and just modify it in really straightforward ways. So let's just walk through it and see what it's doing. So, First thing it does is just tell Python about the OpenMM libraries that we're going to be using. Don't worry about what these lines mean. They just need to be there at the top of your script. So uh, this script, the first thing it does is it's going to load in a PDB file. So uh, something that contains the molecular model we want to simulate. And we do this with one line that, you know, technically what we're doing is we are constructing a PDB file object and assigning it to a variable called PDB. Uh, and when we construct this object, we pass to it the name of the file that we want to load. You know, if you're not a Python programmer, don't worry about it. What you do need to know is where it says input.pdb. You can change that to be the name of your PDB file. So one line we've just loaded in our PDB file. We want to simulate this uh, model using some force field. And we need to tell it what force field we want to use. So the way we do this is to construct a force field object. And we're assigning it to a variable called force field. But the important thing here is that uh, we give it the names of the particular force field that we want to use. OpenMM comes with uh, a number of standard force fields. Uh, that are bundled with it. It's also possible to create your own. And in fact, Li Peng will be uh, talking about how to do that tomorrow. But in this case, we're saying we want to use the Amber 99 SB force field, uh, which is a very widely used uh, molecular force field. And we're also saying that you know, we want to use the TIP 3P water model. OK, so we've now loaded our PDB file. We've said what force field we want to use. Now we're actually going to uh, say, all right, Here's our model. Here's our force field. Construct uh, a representation, uh, you know, a mathematical representation of this uh, molecular system with this force field. Uh, and we do this by with this call force field .create system that creates a system object and assigns it to a variable called system. Excuse me. Uh, important thing here is that when you do it, you can give it a lot of options about how you want it to model the, to, to model this uh, particular molecule. So for example, we're saying that we want it, the, you know, there are many different ways that we could handle non-bonded interactions, especially the long range interactions. So here we're saying we want to use particle mesh AWALT, which is a particular widely used uh, method for modeling long range interactions. Uh, we want to apply a cutoff of one nanometer to the non-bonded interactions. Uh, we're also saying we want to apply some constraints. Uh, constraints equals H bonds mean means uh, constrain the length of any bond that involves a hydrogen atom. So those are rigid. And by doing that, it allows you to use a bigger time step. Uh, and again, if you look in the OpenMM manual, it goes into lots of detail and lists off all the different options that you can include here. We also need to say what method we want to use to integrate the equations of motion. 
uh, the way we do this is by constructing an integrator and assigning it to this variable called integrator. Uh, in this per case, we're doing a Langevin integrator, which probably will not come as any great surprise to you, know th to, you to learn that this uses a Langevin algorithm. So that's a particular uh, widely used algorithm. It uh, models the interaction, but it, it integrates the equations of motion uh, while coupling your system to a heat bath to keep it at constant temperature. And so we say, okay, create a Langevin integrator. Uh, we want the heat bath to be at a temperature of 300 Kelvin. Uh, and one inverse picosecond is the friction co or is the, the friction coefficient to use for coupling our system to the heat bath. At, and we also say that we want to use a uh, time step of 0 0.002 picoseconds or two femtoseconds. All right. So we've uh, got our system all ready to simulate. We have said what method we're going to use to integrate the equations of motion. Now we say, all right, let's start a simulation. Uh, so we create a simulation object and we pass it this information we've loaded, uh, information from the PDB file, the system we created, the integrator, and we uh, assign it to a variable called simulation. So we've now got our simulation all ready to start running. Uh, but we, it's not quite ready. There's a few things you need to do before you actually do it. You uh, need to tell it what your starting positions are. We've, this simulation knows, all right, this is the set of atoms, this is the forces, this is the integration method, uh, but we need to tell it, all right, so the starting positions that we want to use are the ones we just loaded from our PDB file. But we probably don't want to quite use those because who knows where this PDB file came from? Maybe it was like a crystal structure. Uh, this, that those positions may not actually be like right at, uh, you know, it, g given the force field we're using, it may actually be a very high energy state. So generally, the first thing you're going to want to do is just run a local energy minimization to resolve any bad clashes and get something that isn't going to blow up on the first time step. So we say simulation dot minimize energy. Okay, we just ran an energy min minimization in one line. Now we're all ready to run our simulation, almost. Uh, but there's one more thing. You don't just want to simulate. You probably want some sort of output from your simulation. Uh, and so we're going to uh, tell it here, we want to uh, generate output, a trajectory in PDB format. Uh, the way we do this is to construct a PDB reporter object uh, and add it to the simulations list of reporters. Uh, the important things here, it's a PDB reporter, which tells us we're going to get it in PDB format. We also have some other uh, formats, like DCD format is a binary format you can get your output in. Uh, we want to write it to a file called output.pdb, and we want it to write a uh, state every 1,000 time steps. Now we're really ready to go. Simulation.step 10,000 will take 10,000 time steps. Uh, your simulation is just run. Every 1,000 steps, your reporter will be writing out a structure to your PDB file. All done. Hopefully that doesn't look too scary even to the people who've never programmed in Python before. Again, the important thing is that you don't need to write this. We provide the script to you and all you need to do is uh, just modify the specific places to say, you know, what force field do you want? What are your file names? You can change your parameters here. But there's nothing difficult you have to do here. Just take the existing script uh, and change it in straightforward, well-documented ways. On the other hand, if you are a Python programmer or want to learn, you don't have to stick to this script. You have the full power of an entire programming language at your disposal, not to mention the full power of the entire OpenMM library. And this makes OpenMM a really uniquely powerful and flexible uh, package. It's trivially easy to customize your simulation protocol in ways that would be difficult or impossible with almost any other simulation package. One other uh, script I want to show you, uh, it's almost identical to the previous one, but in the previous script we started from a PDB file. We said what force field we wanted to use. We used that force field to model uh, the PDB file. That is one uh, way that you can get your input, your system into OpenMM. Uh, we also support another way, which is to use the Amber Tools package to model your system. Uh, there are certain reasons you may want to do this. In particular, uh, Amber Tools provides very powerful modeling features uh, for uh, setting up your system. Uh, it knows how to do things like take an arbitrary small molecule and build force field parameters for it, things like that. 
Uh, and so if you're doing more complicated modeling, you may want to use Amber tools to get your, uh, to do the initial modeling of your system. And so OpenMM can read in the files that are generated by that. And I've just highlighted here the differences from the previous script. Everything else is identical. Uh, basically, before we loaded a uh, PDB file and a force field, uh, instead here we load an amber parm top file which contains uh, the, all the force field parameters and the description of your molecule's topology and an input chord file which contains the initial coordinates. Uh, and then you, there are a few places like instead of create, calling create system on a force field, we call it on the parm top file. But otherwise it's basically identical. All right, so why don't you try running this? So if you go to your uh, examples directory that came with OpenMM, uh, you will find in there a script called simulatepdb.py. And if you just uh, have, you know, you've installed OpenMM and you've set all your environment variables and everything like it says in the manual, you should just be able to go at a command line to that directory and type python simulatepdb.py and it should run. <laughs>